Today, AMD is going all in with Xbox, Nvidia is going double D, next gen monster gaming CPU gets even better, and you can now bring AMD's new tech to older GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, as you can see right down here, Microsoft actually shared a new video on their Xbox account, and as you can see, it says Xbox plus AMD. And that's definitely the news here, because within the video, the president at Xbox actually said this. It says, quote, at Xbox, our vision is for you to play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. That's why we're investing in our next generation hardware lineup across console, handheld PC, cloud, and accessories. I am thrilled to share we've established a strategic multi-year partnership with AMD to co-engineer silicon across a portfolio of devices, including our next generation Xbox consoles. So yeah, that right there obviously confirms that Microsoft is going with AMD for their next generation Xbox. And of course, that's not too much of a surprise given the fact that they just recently unveiled their Xbox ally, which includes an AMD Ryzen Z2 chip. But obviously this further confirms that and I mean, we are flat out talking a multi-year partnership. Now, they go on to state that together with AMD, we're advancing the state of art in gaming silicon to deliver the next generation of graphics innovation to unlock a deeper level of visual quality and immersive gameplay and player experiences enhanced with the power of AI, all while maintaining compatibility with your existing library of Xbox games. And that last part is definitely interesting because, at least from how it sounds here, it definitely sounds like their next generation Xbox will add support or still include support for past generation Xbox games. And if that's true, that definitely is a very nice plus. With that said, they also mentioned with the power of AI, so I would be willing to bet that their next generation product comes with an NPU. Either way, it, it is pretty interesting as well because you can see it's this is all about building you a gaming platform, meaning Microsoft is really kind of looking when they look towards the future at bringing gaming to everything, PC, handheld, console, cloud, all of that, so they can kind of just have this huge ecosystem for gaming. And we're already starting to see this play out, especially with that ROG Xbox Allied console. Not only that, but this really lends credence to the leak that we saw not too long ago that claims that, you know, this future hybrid console comes with Zen 6, as well as Navi 5, or of course, next generation RDNA 5. Ultimately, this is of course good news for AMD, as well as for anyone who was hoping next-gen consoles would include AMD chips, that definitely looks to be the case. But first, Micro Center's Santa Clara store is finally open, and they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about it. So for one, as you can see, it looks awesome. If you've never been to a Micro Center, think about it as pretty much the only place you can visit in person and find everything you could want for your PC build. Whether it's motherboards, PC cases, CPUs, GPUs, they have it all, plus tons of other electronics electronics with it, and the best part is that they actually have amazing prices. Like with their new June Laptop Savings event, here you can find great laptop deals for the entire month of June. So if you have a micro center near you, you've got to check them out. That or check out some of their deals online. And if you're near their new store in Santa Clara, California, you've got to head over there. There's a reason micro center was the place I went to build my first ever PC. Check out their new deals and store down in the description below. And next up for today, as many of you know, with this generation's RTX 50 series GPUs, Nvidia launched the 5090D card to stay within the US guidelines against China. Unfortunately, not too long after, the US government put a restriction on that card as well. And with that, Nvidia hasn't given up, as two very well-known leakers, and accurate leakers for that matter, have confirmed that Nvidia is releasing yet another GPU. But this time, it's said to be the 5090 Double D. Oh boy, yeah. That's right. What was originally meant to be for the Year of the Dragon, that's clearly been thrown out the window now. Who knows what it's meant to be at this point, but clearly Nvidia likes their GPUs big. 
Either way, as you can see here, it's built on the GB202-240 GPU, while before it was the 202-250, that was the original 5090D, and according to this, it's a PG145 SKU, which apparently means that, at least for this SKU, it's AIB partners only. I mean, maybe they do have another SKU that is for the Founders Edition, but that is what that 145 is supposed to mean. Not only that, but we actually do have a little bit more information. This one apparently confirmed by Copite 7 Kimmy, another very well-known leaker, and we're also talking GB202-240, except this time we do have some specs. According to this, it does come with the same 21,750 uh, CUDA cores. 384-bit GDDR7, so that's a bit of a drop. And then you'll see it, 24 gigabytes of 28 gigabits per second. Now, it does come with the same 575-watt TGP, but that 24 gigabytes obviously is a pretty big drop in memory. Now, they also claims that there is a surprise, but I'm not sure if that surprise is just that it's going to be the same price, yet have quite a bit less memory. I don't know. Either way... NVIDIA is really loving the D. And next up, I recently covered Intel's next generation just monster CPUs set to come for desktop. We're talking like their gaming line, like their consumer lineup. This, of course, is Nova Lake S. It's likely set to be the Core Ultra 300 series. And as you can see, it, at least if this is right, gets up to 52 cores. Just unbelievable. I mean, the low end, we're still talking a 12 core CPU, but things are actually getting even better as more and more leaks seem to surface for this next generation product. As you can see right down here, according to this leaker, it's actually set to come with support for 8,000 mega transfers per second memory. Of course, as it states right now, Aero Lake S only supports DDR5 6400 memory or up to DDR5 6400, while this bad boy will apparently offer support all the way up to 8,000. Of course, that's not too much of a surprise because being able to feed this many cores definitely takes a whole bunch of memory and definitely fast memory. But things kind of get even better from here. According to this, they also revealed that Nova Lake S is expected to support 32 PCI Express 5.0 lanes. Now, there is a total of 48 lanes, which does match the current generation, but 32 of those are set to be PCI Express 5.0, and in fact, with DMI, we're talking 36. Basically, AMD had better look out because Intel is not playing around. Their next generation Nova Lake S is honestly looking like an absolute monster when it comes to a jump in performance. I don't know. I will say that it does look like AMD's next gen is set to add more cores, but of course, nothing like the amount of cores that we're talking about here. Though AMD's is likely their full performance cores, while this is 16 performance cores, 32 efficiency cores, and four low power cores. Still, th this really is wild, and it's definitely looking like the CPU wars is about to seriously heat up. And lastly for today, as many of you know, FSR 4 is a massive leap forward in terms of fidelity when compared to last gen's FSR. And that's of course because it uses machine learning similar to NVIDIA's DLSS. Now, I do think that it's better late than never, but there's a pretty big caveat to AMD's new tech. It's only supported on their newest RDNA 4 GPUs. So think the 9070 and 9060 series cards. Well, it looks like one awesome Redditor was actually able to make it work on AMD's last generation tech. Specifically, he used the 7900 XDX, and it does look really good, but there is an important caveat. As you can see right over here, he did some comparison. This one is FSR 3.1, and you can kind of look over here. There's a lot of jaggedness around here, around the steering wheel. The letters are kind of jagged, but then whenever we go down here, it definitely looks significantly better. You can also see this over here, a bunch of jaggedness with the neon light. Then 
a lot of that is corrected down here. Then when we move over here, the sword looks a lot sharper than it does. So right here is FSR 4, this is FSR 3.1, and the sword does look a lot sharper, the trees look better, so overall it definitely is better. But I did say there was a caveat, and that is performance. As you can see, RDNA 4 on the left has a very noticeable performance drop when compared to last gen's RDNA 3.1, but it's still better than native 4K. Regardless, this is likely why AMD didn't want to include support for last gen. That or it might be the way that he added RDNA 4 to it, I'm not really sure, but you likely can use a lower setting like performance mode to get similar performance, and the FSR 4 will probably still look better. Either way, this is interesting to see because, well, it's possible right now to add the new tech to older cards.